This lesson deals with a second order low pass filter. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter six, starting on page 19. Earlier in chapter six, we made a low pass filter with just an R and a C. You can also make a low pass filter by adding an inductor. This is actually gonna do is increase the filtering as we go above the corner frequency. It's called second order because we have two reactive components. Let's see if we can just kind of look at the circuit on the surface, see if it actually does a low pass function. As the frequency gets smaller and smaller, the impedance of this inductor is J omega L, it gets smaller and smaller. And the impedance of the capacitor is one over J omega C gets larger and larger. So in the limit as we approach DC, this becomes a short and this becomes an open. With an open circuit here, no current flows. And so the drop across here is gonna be zero times R. Drop across a short circuit, very small impedance is gonna be also roughly zero. The rise in voltage will equal a drop of zero, a drop of zero, and V out. So, so V out equals V sub S. As the frequency increases, J omega L gets larger and larger. When you have elements in series, the largest impedance gets the most voltage across it. So the current that's flowing in this inductor is gonna be roughly V sub S divided by J omega L as the frequency goes up. That current's gonna flow in the capacitor and cause a drop. And the capacitor's impedance is going down and down, becoming more like a short circuit. But I have a small current times a small impedance. In other words, V sub S over J omega L times one over J omega C. What I've got is something that's dividing by omega squared. So we're actually filtering by twice what we had before. Let's see if we can get that mathematically. Let's solve for V out over V sub S. Voltage here is the voltage divider of one over J omega C with R plus J omega L plus one over J omega C. Bring the V sub S over here. Let's multiply numerator denominator by J omega C. So I get a one, J omega RC, J squared, which gives me a minus one, omega squared, and then L times C. Multiplying J omega C times this term, we just get a one. Let me define a general form low pass filter. That's equal to one divided by one minus omega squared divided by omega naught squared plus J omega over omega naught Q naught. For our particular case, let's take a look at the terms and figure out what omega naught and Q naught is. Well, here's the easiest one. Here I've got omega naught squared. That's gonna be one over LC. So omega naught is one over squared of LC. This term over here is the reciprocal of this. Omega naught Q naught is one over RC divided by omega naught. We've got that Q naught is one over omega naught RC. And then omega naught is one over the square root of LC. And I could write this C as square root of C squared. And this C would cancel with one of these. I get one over R square root of L over C. You can look at plotting the magnitude of this. We'll take 20 log of the magnitude of the numerator, just one. The denominator, the real part squared, plus the imaginary part squared. In this particular case, omega naught is equal to one over the square root of LC. And Q naught is one over R square root of L over C. There are many circuits that make this function and the value of omega naught and Q naught would then be different. Let's take a look at graphing this. Let's do what we did for the bandpass filter when we were sketching the magnitude, and that is to pick specific values of Q naught and then evaluate omega equal to multiples of omega naught. One real interesting point is when Q naught is equal to one over the square root of two, which is equal to 0 0.707. Evaluating the equation on the end of the last page, when omega equals omega naught, you get minus 3.01 dB. When omega is equal to 10 omega naught, you get roughly minus 40 dB. When omega is 100 omega naught, you get roughly minus 80 dB. When omega is a tenth of omega naught, you get roughly minus 0 dB. And when you have 1 one-hundredth of omega naught, again, very close to 0 dB. So sketching these, you get the dotted line that's here. And you can approximate this with two straight lines, one with 0 dB per decade, and not one with 20 dB per decade times 2. In other words, in one decade here, we dropped 40 dB. This is very much like the low-pass filter we did at the beginning of chapter 6, but now the slope is double the value. If you do this for Q naught equal to 10, get the following results. When omega equals omega naught, we get 20 dB. 10 omega naught minus roughly 40 dB. 100 omega naught roughly minus 80 dB. 0.1 omega naught, again, very close to 0 dB. And 1 one hundredth, again, very close to 0 dB. If you sketch the actual points, you get a little bit of a peak here around omega naught. And you can see here again, we're decreasing at 40 dB per decade. In other words, minus 40 dB per decade is the slope. Now we don't really want a gain like this in our circuit because we're trying to block frequencies above omega naught. Here we're actually amplifying them. For values of Q naught less than one, the second order low pass filter is very similar to the low pass filter that was on page four of chapter six, but with double the high frequency slope. When omega is greater than omega naught, for each decade increase in frequency, we drop by about 40 dB, or a factor of one over 100. So our signal gets smaller and smaller as the frequency goes up and we get better filtering. This is a second order low pass filter.